Oxygen medical gas cylinders come in various sizes. I didn't show you an H size cylinder in the last movie, but an H size cylinder has approximately 6,900 liters of gas in it. A T size cylinder has 9,350. And there are smaller ones as well. These all have approximately the same total pressure, 2,200 psig. So the smaller cylinders have smaller volumes of gas, but the same pressure. Here are some other medical gas cylinders that we have in our lab. The one in the middle is an H size cylinder, the one on the left is a J cylinder, and the one on the right is an M cylinder. Now one of the ways to determine the type of gas that is inside of the cylinder is by the color of the cylinder. The two cylinders on the left are brown, so what type of gas do you think is inside of those cylinders? If you said helium, you're right. Now the cylinder on the right side is not part of the standard color scheme for cylinders, so you won't be able to tell by looking at the color of the cylinder to determine what's inside of it. The best way to do that is look at the label that's on the cylinder. Because only one gas is listed on this label, then this cylinder contains only that gas. Or in this case, 100% oxygen. The gas within this cylinder is used for pulmonary function testing. So you can't tell by looking at the cylinder color to determine what's inside of it. You need to look at the label to figure out the exact percentages of gas inside of this cylinder. You can see that the gas in this specialty cylinder has oxygen percentage the same as room air, 21%. The balance of the gas in there is nitrogen, but there are two other gases in here that are specifically used for pulmonary function testing, methane and carbon monoxide. Here is a blue E-sized cylinder containing a medical gas. What do you think is inside of this cylinder? If you said nitrous oxide or N2O, you're right. One important thing to note with nitrous oxide or N2O is it does not have O2 in it. So when you're giving nitrous oxide to patients, you must combine it with O2, oxygen, at the same time, or else you will kill your patient. Medical gas cylinders that are larger than E have a safety system called an American Standard Safety System, ASSS, to connect regulators and other attachments to the cylinder. It's just where the threads connect to the cylinder. On this example here, they would connect to the gas outlet. It would go from the gas outlet on the cylinder into a pressure regulator to control the pressure that is being delivered to the patient. Gas cylinders, E size and smaller, use a safety system called Pin Index Safety System, or PISS. On the cylinder post, there are special pin holes that are positioned so that only certain attachments can be connected. They must have pins in the proper position to fit into the pin holes that are on the post. So here I have an oxygen regulator that I can only use on an oxygen cylinder because the pins are positioned at the same position as the pinholes. Gases less than 200 PSIG also have their own safety system. One of them is the diameter index safety system, and that's what we see here where a flow meter connects to a wall outlet. The pressure in the wall outlet is approximately 50 PSIG. So, there is a specific size diameter thread and connection that connects this flow meter to the wall. This is the diameter index safety system, or DISS, for an air flow meter.
the diameter index safety system for an oxygen flow meter will prevent you from connecting it to an air outlet. Because oxygen and air flow meters look very similar, without this system you might connect the wrong type of gas. You can see here that the diameter of this opening is slightly different than the diameter of the air opening. It also has a different thread size as well. It's easier to assess these differences now that I put these photos side by side. The oxygen flow meter is on the left, the air flow meter is on the right. The diameter of these openings or connections are different and they also have different thread sizes. In order to get the flow of gas from the flow meter to reach the patient, we need to be able to connect the two. So we use this white piece of equipment here called a stem and wing nut, though most respiratory therapists call this an oxygen nipple. It fits on both an oxygen flow meter and an air flow meter outlet. We would then connect oxygen tubing, which is a skinny, longer length of tubing that connects this flow meter to the patient. Normally I would use two hands to connect the flow meter to the wall outlet, but I'm videoing with my other hand. 